Alright guys, Bludgeboy here to take you through the Mario Kart 8 DLC that was just released uh, last Friday, I believe. I uh, wanted to wait a bit and actually play the, the DLC a bit before giving you my opinion on it, rather than just rushing a video out and going, Hey, this is all the new features, because you can get that information from pretty much anywhere. Uh, but we will just go over the basic stuff beforehand. Uh, it'll cost you... 8 bucks in the US, 7 pounds in the UK, and 10 bucks in Australia to, to just get the first pack which has been released. There is a second pack that they're planning as well, and if you want to buy both the first pack and pre-order the second one simultaneously in one go, it's 12 bucks in the US, 11 pounds in the UK, and 16 bucks in Australia. So if you're going to get both, you may as well just get them both now and uh, save yourself some money. If you do get both, either separately or together, you'll get um, Yoshi and Shy Guy um, colors for each for each one, so you can choose colors for Yoshi other than green, and colors for Shy Guy other than red, which is cool. And you get that like immediately; you don't have to wait till the second one releases. And that's been true for ages as well, so you probably already knew that. Anyway, um, they've also released an update for Mario Kart 8, like just in general, whether you're getting the DLC or not. Um, if you just get the update, it'll be 200 megs just over 200 megs you'll have to download. That'll basically download all the carts and characters, I suppose, as well as any um, data they have regarding the amiibos, seeing as they added that functionality in with the update. Because um, even if you don't buy the, the DLC, if you play online with people who do have the DLC, you will still have to have the data for those um, carts and characters, because you'll see them racing against you. If you do buy the DLC and you download that, that'll be just under 700 uh, megabytes and that'll get you all the data for the tracks as well as access to the characters and uh, the new cards they've released. So, as for what characters and what cards we have, we've got Tanuki Mario, Cat Peach, and Link. As you can see there, uh, Tanuki Mario and Cat Peach are smaller than Link is. Link's a bit bigger than the two of them. As for the cards, we have down here, if we go down far enough. We have got the Blue Falcon from F-Zero, the Tanuki Kart, which is basically you know, a kart for Tanuki Mario, the B Dasher from Mario Kart DS, and if we scroll down a bit further, we have the Master Cycle, which is inspired by the uh, Legend of Zelda, obviously. We have the Triforce Tires, also Zelda inspired, and the Hillian Kite. So, we have one item in each column inspired from Zelda, as well as three carts from a uh, miscellaneous series. So, with the carts out of the way, let's get started with our first track. Okay, starting off on Yoshi Circuit from Double Dash, using Link in his normal standard cart, with a little Triforce thing on the front. Uh, first thing you'll notice, the tracks are way wider than before. It's just a characteristic of Mario Kart 8 in general. The, carts, uh, the tracks sorry, are usually way wider than... Uh, one from the other Mario Kart. I'm not sure why that is, but it's definitely an, an intentional choice because every track is just wider than before. Not a problem, it's just a, a, a difference. First shortcut is up here. You can kind of speed over this. So you've got to be careful with your trajectory because you will end up on the grass. There's a ramp here that wasn't here before. I'm not sure. It's kind of randomly placed, but there it is. We've got another shortcut you can take up here if you zoom over that grass there. Um... You can also zoom into that grass there with the tires on it. The classic shortcut through the waterfall is still here. I wonder if the billboards is the same or if they've changed, or if there were even billboards in the GameCube version, I don't remember. I did record the GameCube version and it will be playing in the bottom right corner of your screen, but I don't... I recorded it a few days ago and have got no idea. <laughs> I wasn't paying any attention to details, just, you know, driving through the course. I don't think that stand was there before. That definitely wasn't there. That was all piranha plants. The piranha plants, I think, have moved from that area of the track to the, um... Closer to the middle. Whoa! Yep, we fell off. Good job. Quality first, here. Quality first. Yeah. 
And there we have it. That is one of my favorite courses from uh, Level Dash, so it is good to see it back. Even if I do fall to track when I'm driving on it. <laughs> okay, next up is Excite Bike Arena. Anyone who's played Excite Bike on the NES will recognize pretty quickly why the track looks like it does. Using uh, Cat Peach and B Dasher. I'm just going to use just a random combination of the new, the new bits with and without the, um, the wheels and the glider from Zelda, whose names I've already forgotten even though I said them probably no more than five minutes ago. So you can do track, uh, tricks of, of, off of all these jumps basically. Probably the, whoop, probably the most simple out of the three tracks given it's just a loop. Someone suggested that given the current battle mode for, for Mario Kart 8, given that it's all on normal tracks and there's no dedicated battle tracks, and given that this track is kind of like short and simple, people have actually suggested that they should make this a battle track, and I totally agree with that. This, I mean, nothing's going to be better than actual dedicated battle tracks that aren't circuits. Because circuits weren't designed to be battle tracks, or rather, battle mode was not designed to be played on circuits. It just wasn't. It was never designed for that. But if you're going to use a circuit for a battle track, this would be a pretty good one to use. Because, you know, there's not that much stuff in the way. There's a few ramps and stuff, but apart from that... Whoop. There's nothing in the way, he says, as he slips on the only banana peel. He is actually seen on the track thus far. But yeah, this would probably be like the best track out of all the tracks we even have to have a metal track on. The only track that would be more suitable than this would be Baby Park, and that's not even in this game, so... I don't know why they don't get on that. They should make more actual battle tracks. People would play battle mode if people had access to tracks that weren't... or, ba or maps, rather, that, w that weren't tracks, because we don't want... Tracks, <laughs> really. We want we don't want just closed circuits. We want just open spaces for battles. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to have circuits for that. Yeah, fairly simplistic track. Probably the most simplistic out of all of them. They're not all that simplistic, so don't worry. Okay, this is Dragon Driftway, another one of the new ones. A lot more complicated than Excite Bike Arena. with an anti-grab section pretty quickly. The first one we've actually seen in the DLC. Thus far. There's a shortcut coming up on your left. Yep, that ramp right there. You probably need two mushrooms for that because you will land, probably land on the grass. And, um... End up um, ne needing to boost off of that as well, so... Are we still anti-grab? Have we been anti-grab the entire time? Hmm, I think we have. I didn't know this whole tr yeah, this whole track is anti-grab, I think. Another shortcut here, if you have a mushroom, you can kind of go on the inside, like that. Yep, the ho- oh no, except for this bit at the start. That's the only bit of that track that's not anti-grab. I did not notice that until right now. Using the, uh, Tanuki car- oh no, I didn't even hear that, because I have no sound at the moment. <laughs> you will have sound, but I will not be able to hear anything. Um... Using the Tanuki Kart, it's, I think, from what I saw in the stats, because I didn't show the stats, because, of, you know, the stats vary depending on what character you're using, what wheels you're using, what glider you're using, etc. Um, seems kind of like, to, it seems like a, a good handling kart. The speed was significantly lower than what I'm used to, and the handling was significantly higher, so... Yeah, it's good. It's good for that kind of thing. If you you know you want something with better better turning than, uh, than speed. And I chose like the slick tire, so it, it'll go as fast as it possibly can. So you know if you, if you choose um, more grippy tires, it'll turn even tighter than this. Although it will also go you know slower than this. Whoop. But yeah, you can probably turn even tighter than that if you use different tires. <laughs> Ones that aren't slick. I believe those are the only two shortcuts as well. The one with the ramp and that one up there where you can speed over the, over the, the grass. I don't believe there are any more. If there are any more, please let, please let me know. 
Because when playing online, I rarely get the DLC courses because people just don't vote for them for some reason, or they just don't come up in the options. It kind of sucks. Okay, next up is Mute City, the last track in the Egg Cup. I only realized after I, well not after I picked the track, just just before I picked the track that I picked the Blue Falcon uh, to race on um, Mute City, and that was a very good coincidence, quite um, handy. Uh, the Blue Falcon is definitely a speed vehicle, uh, that I, because I, I default to like, you know, fast tires, and it had like the same stats that the Gold Cart does, very much tuned for speed. I've got, um, I think the Azura tires picked at the moment, and even that, you know, it, was, it still went very fast in the handling, acceleration, and the other stats just weren't that high, so it really is, this one really is about just going fast. So it's more for uh, advanced drivers, I guess. Whoop. Um, as for the track, once I get back to the start, I can show you something quite cool, because you'll probably have noticed there were no coins on the track, but there are these purple things from F-Zero, which in F-Zero, they, you know, heal your health. But in Mario Kart 8, they will give you coins. And that's actually the only way to get coins on this track, is to either A, drive over those purple things, or B, pick them up from somebody else who's dropped them. Or, of course, you know, get the, the item. But yeah, if you drive over that, you will acquire coins pretty fast. One straight line will get you probably, if not 10, then close to 10. So that short, there's a shortcut on my right, you can kind of boost over that if you can turn tightly enough. If you can't turn tightly enough, don't take that shortcut because you will just go plummeting off the edge. Another shortcut up here, if you can just zoom over those two, um, those two bits there, they will slow you down if you drive over them. Otherwise, it's just like glass. On any, on any other course. But yeah, that, that first shortcut, you do need a cart with pretty good handling to take that, that shortcut, otherwise you will go flying off. Even if you don't think you are, you will you will not turn anywhere near as tightly as you want to. Unfortunately. And because there are speed boosts all over the place on this track, um, Mushrooms, you can basically just keep mushrooms until you reach the, the shortcuts. There's no real other place that it's even necessary to use. It's a speed boost everywhere on this track. Probably another reason to choose a cart with good handling over speed, because you're going to go fast anyway. Okay, now we're on Wario's Gold Mine using Cat Peach and I believe the Sports Coupe? There's not too much different about this track from the original Wii version. I think there are more speed boosts. I think one extra alternate route, which I can show you right now. Up here you can actually go behind the track and there's some speed... Whoop, get the speed boost there. In the verse mode, I believe there are also item boxes back there, so... Other than that, it's pretty much the same, although again, the track is a lot wider. Here. So it's a lot, a lot easier to get to this alternate route. On the Wii, it's actually quite hard to get to this one. Ah, oh, that's the other thing. Yes, the uh, minecarts won't kill you anymore. They won't make you um, tumble. They will actually give you speed boosts. And you can also jump over that corner there, take a bit of a shortcut. But yeah, the carts are actually helpful rather than um, annoying. Let's get close to the edge. You can also jump over that ramp there, I believe. I'm not sure how much uh, time that's going to cut off your your run. Nor am I sure if you'd, if you'd need a mushroom to make use of it. Yeah, you can even drive past these guys. And you can do a jump off of that. Um, the off the track to go onto the, the onto the dirt where the ramps are the ramps the speed boost I beg your pardon Let's see if we can do a jump like this yeah so you can oh yeah you can it actually saves you a bit of time I suppose Other than that, it's not really that different.
So this track did annoy the hell out of me in Mario Kart Wii. Because it was at the end, I think, of one of the Grand Prix, and constantly lost on this track. And would have to restart the entire Grand Prix to get three stars in um, whatever Grand Prix this was part of. Absolute pain in the ass. But yeah, in, in this, I think it's actually more fun in Mario Kart 8 than Mario Kart Wii. Okay, this is the SNES version. <coughs> Excuse me, the SNES version of Rainbow Road. You can get speed boost. Uh, take two of this one because I was rambling in the first one and was not making any sense. So, first things first, the track is way wider than before, which is awesome because the track on the SNES version was very thin and very easy to fall off. Uh, not helped by the fact that it's just easy to fall off the... Whoop, easy to fall off the SNES version in general because it's the SNES version. Uh, Super Mario Kart was kind of finicky, especially with the 3D effect, because it wasn't actual 3D, it was like, it was like uh, an, uh, a 3D illusion kind of thing, and um, it was it was kind of hard to tell when you when you were on the track if you were on like, the edge, like you would fall off the edge of the track even though you thought you were still on the track. Kind of like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you look like the, at the comparison, it's a lot um, wider in this one, which makes it a lot easier to stay on. There's also some ramps which were back there, which are not in the original track. Wow, I am driving way too close to the hedge. There's also this ramp, which was not an original, and you can take a shortcut over that. The thwomps are also... Womps? Thwomps? No, it's womps. Um, the womps are also way bigger, and there's fewer of them, and they make the, tra the, the track shake like that, so you can uh, jump off of that and get, some, get a boost. Oh, that was too close. Yeah, there's, there's fewer wumps and they're easy to avoid, which is good, because there were way too many of them in the SNES one, and it made them super hard to avoid. You can barely drive between them in the, in the SNES one. And there was an entire wall of them at the end, you had to kind of like f be really finicky with that. So yeah, I, I much prefer the Mario Kart 8 version to the, the SNES version of that. Way, way better. Alright then, this is Ice Ice Outpost. Kind of mixed opinions on this track. I mean, it's okay. I like what they've done with the, the, the two paths thing. The shortcuts in this are really hard to get. At least with my main setup, because I usually use um, a gold cart with um, cyber slick tires. And you need to be very precise with these shortcuts. The first one's just coming up now. Yeah, you need grippy tires. Because, I mean, I, I did like a my first take of this track I just completely fucked up and kept missing the shortcuts because I was using I think some like slick tires or something with um, Cat Peach's standard cart and it was just too slippery so if you do use if you do drive on this track and you want to take shortcuts either you have to be very precise if you're going to use slippery tires or just don't use slippery tires <laughs> because you will slide off them Makes sense given it's an ice track, but at the same time it is quite annoying that you will slide off the shortcuts if you don't know what you're doing. So I believe there's another shortcut up here. A bit easy to get onto this one. But you can still slide into that ice wall over there and, um, and crash and lose a few seconds if you're not careful. So yeah, this track really isn't built for, for slick tires at all. I've never had a problem with slick tires in any other course, really. Except for this one. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to have that speed advantage with slick tires, you got to practice, man. Practice, practice, practice. Got to approach those ramps from exactly the right angle every single time. Because I'm using off-road tires. These are pretty good tires, so they'll grip fairly quickly after you land. But slick ones just won't grip at all. <laughs> We'll just not take any shortcuts for this lap. Taken them all already. I believe those are the only three. But those flags there are also kind of deceiving coming off that shortcut because you think you can go that way between the flags, <laughs> but you can't. I don't believe you can jump off the edge. I also like what they've, what they've done there with the coins, turning them into an arrow. 
But it'd be interesting to see if there's an advantage with taking the green or the yellow bit. If there's actually like an objectively better way to drive along the course. Okay, last but not least, High Rule Circuit using Link with the Master Cycle Triforce tires and the Hillian kite. I'm fairly sure it's Hillian. Now you'll notice about this track that everything is been has been Zeldified. Basically, the coins have become rupees. Uh, little logos on them. And when we come up to it, eventually, he's gonna hit me. There are no Zelda weapons as far as I'm aware. You got these diamond things, which are like speed boosts in the other tracks, and we totally failed to fuck this up. If you hit all three of those diamonds, as you just saw there, I'll have to play it for you in slow motion, uh, that ramp will come up, and you'll have like a shortcut. I've never managed to hit all three of them in one go. It seems very, very difficult to actually do, but it will give you a shortcut if you manage to do it. Or if someone behind you manages to do it, hit a few of them, and you hit a few of them as well. As long as, as, long as all three of them are hit, uh, you know, fairly close together, um, it'll spawn that ramp for you. Whoop. Oh, crap. Yeah, the rupees also are, they, they function just like normal coins. There's no separate rupee counter or anything. They just look like rupees for the sake of looking like rupees. Wow. That actually would be a unique Zelda weapon now that I think about it, but it would just be the fact that there's, you know, um, a rupee item instead of a... Yep, there's a ramp again, I just missed it, and I'm driving like absolute shit. I didn't know that bit was anti-grab either. I didn't think there was any anti-grab on this track anywhere. Yeah, the only, the only like, Zelda item would be the fact that, yeah, that, that item, the coin item, is replaced with the rupee item. Other than that, there's no difference. A shortcut you can take over that uh, plane back there and over this one, which that was lucky. <laughs> I believe this is a, a, a an inward drifting bike, so very tight corners with it if you drift properly. Unlike me, who can't. I don't. I usually use like a cart, so I'm used to that. I'm not used to driving with a, a bike in this game. Didn't manage to take the shortcut, which kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll save you some time. I think there's an item box over it as well, but don't quote me on that. Can't remember. Whoa, we're gonna get hit. Absolute worst place to get hit. But we win anyway. Very nice track. Expect to see that one voted on every single time it comes up in online, because people like it. So that was my opinion on the DLC for Mario Kart 8, the first pack. If the first pack is any um, reflection of what the second pack is going to contain, both these packs are absolutely worth it. I do not regret pre-ordering them at all, and that's something I've never done before. I've never pre-ordered DLC before, I don't believe I've ever done that, or even seen it on offer. But this is absolutely worth it. Nintendo know what they're doing with DLC. It's good value, you get good uh, bang for your buck. And it's fun. <laughs> you get hours and hours and hours of entertainment out of that. You can get three new characters for your friends to play when you're, you know, playing split screen when you're online. And they're expanding beyond just the Mario universe, which is good. You can play as uh, Link now, and I think I think the character from Animal Crossing, whose name escapes me, um, will be available in the second one. So they're kind of broadening their horizons a bit and pulling in um, um, elements from other. Uh, Nintendo Universe, which is awesome. So, yeah, definitely check this out. If you've got Mario Kart 8, I would advise buying it. You don't have much reason not to, really. It's good value, and it's improving an already good game. So, yeah, that's been uh, my thoughts on it. I've been Ludger Boy, and I'll catch you guys later.